word of advice to other amazing Black Peruvian people, Black Latin Americans, Black Indigenous individuals, what advice would that be? Or words of wisdom, lo que sea. We exist and we are beautiful and we are magical. We are not a monolith. And if you have your grandparents and they're still alive, talk to them because they have stories and whatever um, generational trauma you may be carrying, that's where the healing starts. I am super excited to chat with you. Um, I first met you at Connie's event, um, Alegria Peruan X, in, at the Mayday Center in yes. Brooklyn. It feels like a lifetime ago, right? Yes. Before the pandemic and the other pandemics and the viruses, y todo eso. so um, that was the first time I heard you speak. I am Afro-Indigenous Peruvian, um, born in Peru in El Callao. Um, so it's, El Callao is like the hood hood. You know, if I had to compare it to New York, I would say El Callao is Brooklyn. Okay. But you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn or today? Like Brooklyn, like Bushwick, what Bushwick used to be way okay. back in the days, you know? Okay. Um, Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy, like around there. And, um, you know, like my, both my parents are actually black and indigenous. My mom's um, mother, um, she's a black woman. Her family comes from El Carmen and Ica, Chincha in that area of Peru. Um, my grandpa, my mom's dad is from Cerro de Pasco, which is the highest point in like the Andes mountain, like one of the high points. And on my dad's side, I don't really know much about my grandpa um, because they got separated really early on. So I didn't really have much of a introduction to him. But my dad's mom is from Juan Cabelica, um, Ancash, the Ancash region of the Andes. Um, so we're Black and Indigenous on both sides. I migrated when I was four years old, landed on South Side, Jamaica. And um, I think a lot of the work that I do is just pretty much getting back to my identity because I didn't feel like I had one when I migrated. Um, because uh, if you look at what Southside Jamaica is, it's predominantly Black. And I didn't really grew up grow up with anyone that looked like me so it was like you know I was growing up black without even realize that I was growing up black you know we had a lot of West Indians out there Caribbeans and that's how I grew up so you know moving forward into like high school and stuff like that that's when I first got introduced to Latinidad and still found that I quite didn't fit in so I'm you know grateful that although the experiences were still traumatic, that I am able to create um, my own identity in which I honor, you know, both, even though, you know, Latinidad still has a, a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, you know, finding a small space at least, you know, and, and to also help people uh, find that identity in where, you know, you can honor being Black, honor being Indigenous, and if, you know, Latinidad fits, you can introduce that into your own identity as well. So first off, I think it's super beautiful that you know specifically, like, which regions your, you know, your grandparents are from. Is that something that your parents always told you, or is that something that you, you know, through conversations with your parents and things have started to learn some more of those, like the geographical locations and all of that? Well, um, it actually started with Connie's Alegria Peronex. And I was just like, you know, like I knew that I was Peruvian and I was always questioning, you know, like, why is my dad black if, my grandma is from 
X, Y, Z, you know, and, and if my dad is black, how come he doesn't have the curly hair? Why is his hair so straight? Mm. And then with my mom, it's like, well, if my mom is like light skin, I know my grandma's black. So that's where my mom gets her curly hair from, you know, um, but it was with doing this project with Connie that kind of like pushed me like I need to be asking more questions I I need to know exactly where people come from you know and I was already trying to do my family tree and trying to you know tie where everything was coming from because um my grandpa which is the name the last name that I use Morang it's the background is Irish Mm. So with that, I'm like, I, I, need, I need to be researching more. And when my grandma passed, it was like, crap, I feel like the doors are like starting to close. Yeah. But I was speaking to my cousin who my grandma raised and she was like, you know, like Nona was always speaking to, uh, speaking to me that this is where her family comes from. This is where you know, her father comes from. And then the more that I looked at it, the more I looked at dates, found out that my grandma's grandpa could very well have been born a freed man. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, this is amazing. I need to find, I need to find more. So I'm very grateful for Alegria Peronekis because it gave me that push to find out more information and finally be able to identify in a place where I fit in because I think the trouble with a child of the diaspora is no somos ni de aquí ni de allá we're stuck in like a limbo and I don't want to be stuck in that limbo no more I'm not, yeah, you know, so did a lot of digging. Good for you. And, you know, it also brings up a great point of like the need to talk to elders in our family beyond just like, oh, that's grandma or like, you know, things like that. I know my grandmother passed in 2020 and I started to realize that she was my own, but well before she passed, I was like, this is the only living grandparent that we have. And we're not going to get like once these people transition, we're not going to get these stories or these histories. And so I actually tasked my sisters with every time you talk to her, just turn your recorder on your phone, right? Or interview her and turn your recorder on your phone. And so every time we would talk to her and she actually got sick of it, she'd be like, hey, pero tu hermana me pregunta la misma cosa. Ustedes no hablan. And I'm like, okay, I get it. But like, you know, that's how I learned that she, her father was a cacao farmer, right? And so like, they, which is really funny because I took her on this little outing to St. Augustine and then St. Augustine, they have like this place where they like show you how they make chocolate. My grandma dead ass fell asleep. And I was like, mommy, like what the fuck, you know? And she was like, but I used to do this when I was a child. Like they, I know what they're like, I already know what they're going to say before they say it. Like I used to do this and I didn't know that. Right. And so if I didn't make the efforts, um, if I didn't come to the realization and make the efforts that these histories and stories will be gone once they transition, and then you're left with what, you know, like, so definitely super important to like talk to, and not just your grandparents, right, but your, you know, cousins and and, and aunts and uncles and, and their siblings or whoever, you know, is still with us today, because that history is so important. And, you know, it's part of not of feeling connected, right? Yes. Of feeling connected and feeling grounded, because their migration can be beautiful and sometimes migration is actually uh, motivated by violence right yes. especially throughout Latin America and the, the histories of all of the countries across Latin America sometimes there's pain there and so when having these conversations it's important to also be sensitive to that right and not like having our elders or people kind of like we don't want to re-traumatize them when we're trying to figure yeah. out information which is super important Yeah, because I mean, like in, in, in asking these questions, like, you know, my grandma, very, very black, very, very black lady had trouble even sitting in that identity. Mm-hmm. And with that, you know, like 
um, when you grow up that way, trauma kind of almost forces you to create more trauma when it comes to skin color. And, you know, my grandma created that trauma with my mom who created that trauma with me. And in asking these questions and knowing her story and knowing where she came from and the things that she had experienced kind of made me forgive mm. because para que te digan, you know, para mejorar la raza, you have to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And it's like, it almost kind of makes you feel like you're not good enough, but then you hear these stories and you're like, I understand. And history is so powerful. And especially when it comes from our grandparents, because, you know, we all have our own realities. Our parents have their own truth. Our grandparents have their own truth. And in, in listening to their truth kind of, you know, sets the tone for how we want to continue to move forward because also we can no longer allow other people to tell our own stories. Every research that I have done always leads to a white man going on a, you know, journey somewhere else, you know, for their own being and then finding X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I'm not about to let a colonizer tell me, you know, my own story. Absolutely not. Absolutely. And so what is your favorite thing about being an Afro-Indigenous person from Peru? Oh my God, it's the history, you know, behind both, you know, it, both they, both identities are equally beautiful and equally ugly. You know, the history behind it, because, you know, it does have a lot to do with, you know, slavery and colonization, but then it also... The beauty of it, 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 it like brings me back to remembering that these identities are as old as time, where it comes from, you know, being Black and where my ancestors came from and doing, you know, the research. There's this um, scientific thing that I was like looking up in like genealogy that a lot of Black women carry the mitochondrial Eve gene mm. that, you know, takes you back to when the first woman was created and that I was just so like fascinated by that and I, wow, like the Black identity is just so big and and interesting and and beautiful and the things that you know black culture has brought into latin america the food the music you know because without that we wouldn't have festejo we wouldn't have the type of foods that we eat and it's like you know the same thing with like being indigenous we have la, la papa la huancaina and we have um the the dances that they do um the celebration to the sun, you know, honoring the earth, honoring Pachamama and, you know, and those things make me feel like, uh, damn, I can't even find the word, like very almost full circle. Mm -hmm. One thing I've heard a lot of Peruvian people say is like, you know, they're, like people don't understand beyond Puerto Rican and Mexican, right? People are, to, in my experience, are just now starting to understand the Dominican Republic and like that that is an actual place. Like I used to have people in like middle school tell me that Dominican wasn't a real thing. I was just making Girl. it up. And I'm like, Girl. no, no, like I, like that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. I am a real entity, um, you know? And so I've heard oftentimes, you know, that people from Peru specifically, whether they're, Black Peruvians or not, is that there a lot of people don't understand that Peruvian people exist. Yes. And so, you know, through it sounds like through your research and conversations with family members and, you know, all of these things that 
it does feel very full circle, you know, to like tap into your family's own history and then see the connections of the history beyond, you know, those who we can name who came before us and yes. how all of that does exist within within us and within us and ex externally, right? Like it's in our food, it's in our music, it's in the culture that so many people come to almost be synonymous with Latin America mm -hmm. is Blackness and it's, it is it is indigenous, right? Like, and it's, I'm, have, I'm actually trying to like change the way that I talk about things a little bit with language because when we say like African influences, like African is indigenous. Yes. You know? And so like what, so I don't like to make it seem like African and then indigenous over here, but like, you know, those people who were trafficked and, you know, enslaved across Latin America, those were indigenous people. Yes. Period, you know? And so, yeah. Indigenous actually means to be of a certain land, you know? So like you could be an indigenous of DR because you're from there. Yeah. Black indigenous folks of DR, African indigenous folks, like, because they have their tribes. So you are also a poet. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to recite nothing <laughs> here, um, but you know, I saw that she was doing a little poetry and it's been, a, it's been a while that you've been doing, that you've done, you know, public speaking in that way um what got you into poetry and what got you to the point where you were like fuck it I'm gonna perform live for this specific audience oh my god oh, man art and writing were my saving grace you know Jessica you just stated you know people are just starting to realize you know DR is a real place on on you know without it being the destination spot you know growing up you only had two options puerto rican and mexican mm -hmm. you didn't want to be mexican because of xyz that of how they're being portrayed so i identified puerto rican for a very long time because it's like peru where is that what part of mexico is that from you know so it, it being othered is what yeah. pushed me to find, you know, my own language for myself. And I would just write down how I was feeling, you know, different remarks that people would make, you know, like my accent when I had one. Um, so that, you know, pushed me to paint or write, you know, painting was a way for me to speak and while well, writing was for me to put my thoughts you know into words and oh my god i used to i used to go to the new york and poet cafe but i don't like being the center of attention and it makes me nervous so i would whenever i would be would excuse me would be feeling extra extra brave then i go up there and you know elena is what my friend Elena Brooklyn Warmy is what brought me back. She was like, you have to, you have to come. Mm -hmm. like, okay. And I did it. You know, I've been going through a lot of heartbreak and trying to walk and feel that grief. And, you know, wrote that. And it kind of made me, I felt like I could take a deep breath after I put that out there. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I mean, you. I don't know if I would do it again, maybe in another eight years, <laughs> because even with podcasting, oh my God, like I have really bad anxiety. And when I have bad anxiety, I stutter. And if you hear, if you listen to the podcast, you would never be able to tell mm -hmm. ever because, you know, my audio engineer, who's uh, my ex-girlfriend, she's actually the co-creator of my podcast and she, you know, the work that she does, man, hats off to her <laughs> because she makes me sound like phenomenal. No, she makes you sound like what you are and who you are. Yeah. Yes. Even with a stutter. So true. That's true. Even That's with a stutter. True. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So speaking of podcast and, and all of these things, where can people find you online? Um, Instagram, Black Flowers Grow. 
can follow the podcast page, which is Oye Mi Gente. Um, we are everywhere. I'm actually gonna try and bring it back on sometime in September. You know, I've been talking to my ex, which you can follow her too. She does amazing things. Her name is Unique Being. We've talked about, you know, working on things to like, you know, bring it back because the, to the core of me, I am a storyteller, rather if it's through poetry or through art. And I think that it is important to continue to archive, Absolutely. you know, all our experiences. And I really want to get back to that. So you can follow me there. And my website is coming back up soon. Same thing, September, sometime okay. in September. Check you out. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Trying, girl, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you're doing. You're doing. Yes. And so if you had a word of advice to other amazing Black Peruvian people, Black Latin Americans, Black Indigenous individuals, what advice would that be? Or words of wisdom? Lo que sea. <sighs> we exist. And we are beautiful. And we are magical. We are not a monolith. And if you have your grandparents and they're still alive, talk to them because they have stories and whatever um, generational trauma you may be carrying, that's where the healing starts. Woo, that's a... <laughs> <Go down. laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. I like, that's so true. That's, that's so true. And I will add to that, or just my own take is like, you don't always have to feel like you're generational, like you're the first one to deal with generational trauma or whatever that specific generational trauma is. And like, know and trust that people before you have been working on this thing and to not feel like you have to be, you're the first one and the only one and you have to heal all the shit like at this moment, right? Like, exactly. Time and it takes time, time and step by step and you know, you're never going to be 100% healed, but even with a fraction of it is totally okay because at the end of the day, we are still deserving. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for chatting. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm excited. I'm like, holy shit, Gloria. 